welcome back to the youtube channel it's your favorite village boy mr ghana baby and i'm back again with another video from south sudan if this video doesn't inspire you then i don't know what else will inspire you in this world like i said i respect the people of this beautiful country because it's a country with the most resilient people with an unquenchable spirit to prosper despite the years of challenges. Can we all give a round of applause for the beautiful people of South Sudan? Don't forget to like this video, subscribe and be part of this awesome channel, and sit back, grab a chilled water, and come and be inspired. I mean, this is a country that has been through a lot, but the people from here never gave up on this country. Some left, but they are coming back to make South Sudan home again. They're not just coming to make it home again, they're also adding value on what they learned in a different country to help develop their motherland. I'm here at Cornerstone Computer Training Center. This is the guy who left the country and decided to come back and be part of the change that they are all looking for in this beautiful country and i know he's definitely going to share a lot with us my brother how are you doing I'm doing well good to see you good to see you too my name is watermaya well, i had to be a lot really. oh really yes from ghana yes. you know you know that yes yes wow your story is inspirational it is really and i have to visit you thank you i can't you. leave this country without sharing your story thank you maya thank you they don't know you what is your name and where are you from? My name is Joseph Lomoro and I'm from South Sudan. From South Sudan? Yes. Were you born in South Sudan? Yes. I was Were born in South Sudan. Were you raised in South Sudan? Yes. You are born and raised there? I was born in South Sudan and then at the age of about 15 there, then I left the country. Yes. Why would you leave your own country? I left the country due to the crisis that affect the country. Wow. Yes. So that's why you left? Yes. Um, and where did you go? I went to different countries because I don't have a passport, I don't have a visa, I don't have any paper that will identify that this gentleman is from South Sudan or from any other country. Whoa. So what I do is I have to find my way through the buses, the trucks and the, uh, all kinds of means of transport. So anyway, I went to Kenya by bus. By bus? Yes. Then uh, from Kenya on my way to Zambia, I also went by bus. Jeez. And then uh, from Zambia uh, to Zimbabwe, I went with a truck. Uh, there are those uh, truck, Which kind of heavy, truck? heavy trucks that takes goods. Uh -huh. So I have to negotiate with the driver and tell him the truth that my friend, I came from South Sudan and I'm desperate, I need a help. So at the end, they will help me. And then I cross all these countries Whoa. illegal without any passport, without any visa, without anything. So, all in total, almost 10 countries. In total, you yes. move from one country to, to another? another? One country to another, up to 10 countries. 10 good countries? Without a passport, without a visa, with nothing. I, I think Guinness Book of Record, <laughs> your name should be in. <laughs> the guy who traveled to 10 countries without a passport and a visa. Uh -huh. That's incredible. So, what was your final country that you went to? My final country in South Africa. Was South Africa? Yeah. Whoa, My where God. in South Africa? Uh, in Cape Town. Cape Town. Yes. So what were you doing in South Africa? Uh, in South Africa, it wasn't easy because reaching South Africa, mm. first thing, I became a refugee. You became a refugee I in South Africa? I became a refugee in South Africa. And life was so hard that I don't have anybody. I don't know South Africa. I did not even complete my school. So life was so hard in South Africa. So what I do, I become even first a street kid in South Africa. There's nothing I could do. You see, I'm begging a bread or water from people in South Africa. So until after two years, then I begin finding my way out through people, through churches. So particularly, I went to a town in, Cape, in the South Africa called Bloemfontein. Bloemfontein there, yeah. I got one pastor. He passed away. May his soul rest in peace. Yes, uh, he's called Pastor Vexon. So I was just sitting in one of the church uh, outside. So this guy came from there and asked, what are you doing here? I'm saying, I'm just sitting. So you look hungry and say, yes, I'm hungry. Then he took me in, he offered me something to eat. Then he began asking me, where are you from? Then I told him I'm from Sudan and I began telling him my story. How I got to South Africa and etc. Then the guy was really surprised. 
And that guy took me home. After taking me home, that is the beginning, the unfolding of things now. Taking me home, I was, the first job I did in South Africa was to work in the farm. Whoa. Yes, I work in the farm, make those tomatoes, cabbages, all that, you know, and give them to the communities around. And then from there, when the, this pastor realized that my job is really okay, and then he handed me over to another pastor called Pastor Calda Bloom. Right now he's in South Africa. We are in contact actually. Then this pastor was, he inspired me and I was also inspired by him. He said, Joseph, what do you want to do? I said, I want to go to school. I said, okay, I can take you to school. So to my surprise, the guy took me to the best school in South Africa. One of the best school uh, in South Africa in Cape Town. Haldabek College. So he took me there. That is what. Uh, that is when I was studying there. But what were you studying in school? IT. IT. Yes. So you stayed in South Africa for how long? I, I stayed there for ten years in total, but the rest of the year I wasn't studying. It's a years of hustling. You see. But then when I got opportunity to go to school, that is when this pastor took me to a nice college, and then he rented for me apartment and everything. So I became like one of the guys there in South Africa. You see? And did you start working in South Africa after school? After school? Yes, actually I was a sponsor. Because what happened is, I was given a, a scholarship by one of the tycoon guys in South Africa. He's one of the rich men there. So, um, and this guy sponsored me without seeing me. He just heard about, oh, there's somebody come from Sudan, South Sudan. By then it's called Sudan. Okay. Yeah, somebody come from Sudan and it's by the name so and so. and. Um, He's desperate need to go to school. When he heard about that, the guy began sponsoring me for four good years. I've never seen him and he did not see me. So the only moment I got to see this gentleman was during the time of my graduation. Because I have no family, I have nothing. So when he heard that Joseph is graduating, graduating he came with his wife to attend my graduation. And that is someone who is rich. I could not believe that he could come to me. Just like you. Imagine all the way from Ghana. How could I believe that, that you could I'm even come <laughs> and, you know, step your foot in this place, of dust and all that. You see? So I'm so glad and so inspired by people who surround me. Yeah. So uh, that was what happened. Um, the guy attended my graduation. It was a moment of tears, actually. Even he himself was crying. And normally, when you went through a suffering, and then the tears that comes out later is a tears of joy, not of that suffering anymore. Yeah, so everybody was crying, and then eventually uh, I graduated well. He took me to Johannesburg because the guy owned a factory. So he took me to Johannesburg, of which I was given a nice office. Yeah, very big office, and then there I was also doing data entry. So I have my office there, and if anything is there, they even give me a big house. They, uh, they took me to the work every morning, to and from. I go to the work, and then after 6 o'clock, the car is already waiting for me here, I go home. But then something just hit my brain, that my friend. Why all this so long? Go home. Yeah, so, <laughs> yes, I have to go home. So yeah. you stayed in South Africa yeah. and you felt like you have to come back I home. just have to come so back home. So which year home. did you come back home? In 2012. So you came back in the year 2012? Yes. Right after independence? Yes. Then you came back. Yes. What, what were you coming to do? First of all, I miss my people so much. Wow. You see, I miss my mom for almost all these years. I've never seen her. I've never talked to her. They don't know even where I am. You see, so I just feel that attachment, attachment that I have to come back home, you see. So that was the first reason. The second reason also, I have this dream that I need to do something. But first, when I went to school, I went to school with the wrong mentality. Remember, we believe that if you go to school, you graduate, you need, a get, you need to get a good job. After getting the good job, Build yourself a house, marry, marry, buy a car. Build a house. Yes. And you're successful. You're successful. So when I graduated, I still have that mentality in mind, though there is something that inspires me to do something. I still maintain that job is number one. 
job is number one. So I decided to come to South Sudan, reaching here in 2012, that mentality is still there. And then wrong people around me also surround me. Did you really go to school? Imagine all these years of being there. People are coming from America, from where, buy big cars, build, but you come from South Africa, nothing. And do you really have papers? You are not getting a job. So it got me frustrated. I apply, I apply, I apply almost 10,000 applications, no reply, no what? In this country. In this country. Then I say, okay, so what do I do? And people already begin laughing at me. Ah, look at this. I, I think he did not go to school. You see, so I become like a laughing stock around. So another idea has come. Ah, why can't you go back to South Africa? After all, the office has been waiting for you there. It's just a matter of call. Your ticket is ready and you are back. And then another idea said, no, just remain. So one day, because I don't have resources, I don't have money, I just graduated. So I said, okay, one day something inspired me. I said, Joseph, you have the skill. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for exactly? So I have one laptop that I was using uh, at school. So that one laptop, I decided to use it for training. And then I was sleeping in the place of Zinka, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, I don't know what do you call those uh, buildings that I structured, uh, uh, built with iron seed. In Ghana, I don't know what do you yeah. call it. Yeah. So I have this kind of, of, of room nearby the roadside like this. So what happened? My idea come, no office, no table, no good chair, nothing. So, but I need to train somebody. So what I do, I have a mattress, no bed. So I just have my bed sit there, maybe two pairs of shoes, uh, three pairs of trousers, that is it. So I say, what else from here? I converted my room to an, to an office. So what do, what do I do? At night I sleep, five o'clock I'm up. I fold my mattress very well, fold my everything, all put in the bag behind the house. Okay? And then the morning Clean, in the yeah, in the office nicely, put my small table there, and then with the, all those, uh, you, I'm still using them even, those kind of chairs. <laughs> I did not want to buy a fancy one, just use the same one. You see, because it is not the chair, but it is what comes out from my mind. So I put that small chair there and everything with one computer. And then what happened, the surprise is that I put a big banner, Cornerstone Computer Training Center, one computer. And it's my personal. <laughs> so people came. People came and, uh, oh, this is a Cornerstone Computer Training Center. Yes. Where's the classroom? I say, are you <laughs> asking? <laughs> yes. Are you asking for classroom or you want to be trained? I say, okay, yes, you want to be trained. Okay, how many computers do you have? I say, do you want to be trained by how many computers? With the two or three or four? This one computer is enough for you. Yeah. So, slowly I that. begin. I started with that. I trained one person. Trained him very well. He was inspired. He brought the brother. From there, the brother brought another one. And then another one. I realized I registered almost five people, then I bought another computer. There are now two. Then I also begin and I begin continuing like that. From there I realized now people are responding. When I realized people are responding, I then decided to rent. Because I don't have enough money to buy now. So I could rent so that I pay on a monthly basis. So you're renting yes, the from, pe from yes. people. Yes. Yes. I rent the laptop from people so that I agree with them and pay the amount in it until I can acquire mine. How many, how many computers do you have now in there? Uh, right now, I have about 20 computers. 20 computers. And yeah. how many people do you train in here? In a day, I can train about 80 people. And how did you get this place? Uh, this place was not easy. Uh, this place belonged to one old woman because when I came here, and then the place was a swampy area. People don't like it. If it rain, you have to wear gumboots. You see, so people run away from the place. So for me, I came and then I start working on it. So the owner of the house was inspired by me and everything, whatsoever amount of money need, I give her and everything. You see, I help her just like a son. So eventually she decided that Joseph, I want to sell the place. That was a pain in my heart because I have no money. I came in 2012, June. I only worked for six months. I gained a lot. 
2013, the war broke up. The war broke out. Yes. So now I have no way. The computer center is no longer working, and yeah, too. And the owner of the house brought the news. I want to sell the place. I said, now what do I do? Where do I go now from again? Another beginning. Then I decided, okay, she asked me, can you buy the place? I say yes, yes, I can buy. You have the money to buy the place. Yeah, I don't have. I don't have. Say yes, I can buy the place, Mama. But I don't have the money now, cash. She said there is somebody who want to pay this money, cash, in my bank account. And now you are here telling me you don't have money. So why should I give you the place? I rather go and give to the person who uh, want to, what do you call it, to buy my place, cash. I say, I leave it on your hand, but. I've been working with you here, and it was so good. You're like my mother, and then I'm like your son. So I know I can get the money to pay this place. Yeah. But I cannot pay it all. If you can allow me to pay on installment, fine. She looked at me like this. Because that time in 2013, I did a massive, uh, what do you call it, training. And therefore the training was not even like this. This one, 20 computers, 15 is not. There I have 50 computers. Within a space of six months, I got 50 computers. The economy was very good. The currency was very strong. You see? One pound is e equivalent to, I don't know, one South Sudanese uh, US. So it was so good. So I acquired a lot of computers and Yato. You see? So by then, when she told me this thing, I began selling off this thing again. You see, I sold all the computers until again I'm left with the four. <laughs> just to hold yes, this place. just to hold it because there's no way out. If I let it go, and I realize it's a very strategic place. Yeah. If I let it go, where I'm going to begin again, there's no way out. So I sold all these things out. I have even uh, that time even between the six months I bought even a car. Yeah, I sold it out everything. Then I give her the first installment. Then she said, okay, thank you. You see, and then from there, oh, she will call me Joseph, I need something, I'll just give. I begin paying this place from 2000, uh, 2013, and then I finish it in 2020. <laughs> that is like seven years. Yes, yeah, seven years paying. Because it is expensive, I cannot afford. The kind of job that I'm doing cannot allow me to buy such a place. This one, for example, this one in Juba is the second uh, residential area, very high. So the amount also goes according to that. Yeah. So. And um, now you're back. Will mm -hmm. you say it's worth it to uh, move back to Juba? Is it worth it? Yes, it is really worth it to be in Juba. And not only Juba, in entire South Sudan. I think a few days ago I was in Ye. Ye, they consider it most, uh, the most dangerous area, but I was there. Yeah. So, coming back to Juba or to South Sudan is a good idea. And do you think there are more opportunities that more people can come and um, explore? Yes, there are very many opportunities. Actually, if I can say, uh, they call us a new nation, isn't it? Yeah, new West country. So, the new, you, you, you know what it means. Exactly. Something that is still new. Oh, okay. So, we are still a brand new nation with the, all the resources intact, not touch. That is why all eyes are in South Sudan. So, you as South Sudan, if you want to stay outside there, fine, but here is the land of opportunity. Even you cannot compare the opportunity of South Sudan with the one of America. Right now, as I'm talking. Because you might be surprised. We are standing on top of oil. You see? You will never know. You will never know. Maybe you are standing on top of one giant goal, maybe just there. This one requires the young mind, or the old minds as well, to come together and explore. What are you going to tell South Sudanese who are out there? I mean, they left just like you during yes. the crisis. Now, if you have a message to tell them to return back to the country, what would that message be? My message to the fellow South Sudanese who are in the diaspora, I just tell them to come back to South Sudan mm. because this is a land of opportunity. This is a land where we can do a lot entrepreneurship um, in the government. 
in every sector within the Republic of South Sudan, mm. there is a big opportunity. I want to do something for you. Mm -hmm. Do you need more computers? That would be so <laughs> amazing. <laughs> you know what? I, um, I, I'm going to do this that for you. That would be so amazing. Uh, how many computers do you have now? I have about 20 computers. 20 computers. So mm -hmm. we're going to give you 50 computers. I mean, wow. Um, wow. Each and everyone out there, I'm going to leave the contact in here, the uh, phone number, everything. If you're watching this video, know that it's by force to give this guy a 50 computer, man. So like you have 20, we're gonna get you extra 30 computers. Wow, that is really amazing. No, I mean, we're gonna make it happen. This is like a whole team where we tend to support Africans. And this is what we're gonna do because you've done something amazing. I mean, whatever that happened to you, you still came back to, I mean, I mean, what are, who are the people that you are training in here? Wow. Who are the people you are training in here? The people I'm training here, yeah. they're from different universities, from different colleges, or those who are just individual decided to gain the skills. So it's kind of a variety of people. People. Yes. A variety of people coming yeah, here. Coming in and here. Then you train them. I train them, yes. You know what? He's adding mm -hmm. value to the society. You know what? Do me a favor. It's a favorite village boy right here in Juba, South Sudan. Don't disappoint me. We need 30 extra computers. Even if it's a second hand computer that you have, I need it here in Juba. So you know what? I'm gonna put his number, his phone address, call him and tell him that I mean you have to put the address so that they'll be able to send you there. Yeah, so sure, so sure, so sure. No, they're gonna say I, I'm not joking, okay? <laughs> thank you, thank you, my I really I'm not, I'm not joking, we're gonna make it possible. I'm already inspired even oh, before you no, came here. No. <laughs> Yo, uh, if you have the chance to change one thing in Africa, what will it be? One thing to change? In Africa. The only one thing that I want to change, not to allow someone to send 1,000 applications and not get a reply. So rather do your own thing. Create your own thing and become employer instead of employee. This mentality of going to school to get a job, if I have the power to change the syllabus in the entire University of Africa, I could do that. We change it so that it is no longer going to school to get a job. Let us teach them that, go to school to create a job, not go to school to look for a job. So that is the only thing I need to change in Africa. Entrepreneurship is the key. Thank you <laughs> so much. Thank you, Maya. Thank you. Thank you.